Welcome to Frankly with Dean LaFerla. I am here today with Professor Grant McGregor from the Department of Developmental and Cell Biology. Professor McGregor is also the Scientific Director of the UCI Transgenic Mouse Facility. So uh, Grant, welcome. Thank you, Frank. Great to have you here. And as you know, we're here to discuss a very critical topic about uh, genome editing and a relatively recent new technology called CRISPR. So first question is, uh, can you maybe explain to us what genome editing is? Uh, sure, Frank. Um, so uh, genome editing essentially is, uh, you can think of an analogy as such as, uh, imagine our, the chromosomes in each of the cells in our body are like a cookbook. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, those chromosomes contain recipes for making proteins, as well as some other things that are, are necessary for our bodies to survive and to grow, develop, and reproduce. So genome editing uh, is essentially the ability to, uh, in an analogous manner, open up the cookbook and to maybe edit some of the pages in it. And then to you might scribble in your favorite notes for a recipe, or you might erase something and say, better to use uh, cremini mushrooms instead of uh, some other type of mushrooms. So, wow, that sounds like it has a lot of implications for a lot of human medical diseases, right? Can, maybe, uh, can you maybe give us a little bit of insight into how it could be used for that? I'm sure the audience would really be most keen to hear that. Absolutely. Um, so genome editing really is, I, I, I think, is coming into its own now. Uh, and that is because of this technology called CRISPR, Mm -hmm. uh, which came out of uh, some very elegant basic research. And this illustrates the importance of basic research going back 20, 25 years or so. And this concerns the ability of an enzyme found in bacteria to cut DNA in a very precise manner. There are companies in the world now uh, that are, uh, have developed therapies to treat genetic diseases uh, that cause quite serious conditions, for example, sickle cell disease. This is an extremely debilitating disorder that predominantly affects African Americans uh, in the US, and it's due to a single base change mm -hmm. in a globin gene. So now we can take, uh, we being the clinicians in this case, and the scientists can take stem cells from these individuals, they can treat them with a CRISPR uh, treatment, that will edit that single base and change it back to the correct base, and then reintroduce those stem cells uh, in a process called autologous uh, transplantation. And then these individuals can essentially be cured for life. What are some other uh, diseases that you think CRISPR could play a role in? Well, for example, uh, I know there's great interest in trying to treat a human genetic disease that results from dominant mutations. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Dr. Leslie Thompson, who is in our school, has studied Huntington's disease for many years. And as you know, Huntington's disease is caused by an unusual ex expansion in DNA in one copy of the Huntington's gene. So a very attractive idea is that if we could devise a method to target CRISPR to inactivate the abnormal copy of the gene, whilst leaving the wild type or normal copy of the gene okay, then that's a very attractive proposition to try and treat this devastating, dominantly inherited disease. Very powerful, very powerful technology that could be a significant game changer for all of mankind, right? Absolutely, yes. 